All right, here we go. So I'm Karen Rubin. I'm the VP of product here at Quantopian. And today I'm going to give you a basic run through of the Pipeline API, a new API that we launched within the last few weeks to help you better screen and select securities for your universe. If you've got questions, feel free to ask them and I'll do my best to answer them as I go along and then definitely at the end as well. Uh, just do that in your question window on the side of your GoToWebinar. So just to recap, Quantopian is here because we're looking for, let's, let me get my screen working, there we go. We're looking to create, we're looking for the holy grail, uh, as many companies are, but we want to look for the, the best collection of uncorrelated return streams so that we can, as a hedge fund, invest in the users of our communities and in their algorithms. And in order to do that, we need to build a platform that allows you to create the best algorithms that you can. One of the things that we want to be able to support and what we want to encourage our users to do and, and our community to do is create long short strategies. And the reason is that these are great early strategies for us to look at starting the hedge fund with. When we think about these, they're generally of the framework. Start with the entire universe of stocks, which is on any given day about 8,000 US equities. Then filter down that, that to some subset. Maybe it's the Russell 2000, maybe it's the S&P 500 or the Fortune 1000, but filter it down to some subset that you know you care about. Then rank that subset based on some number of factors. And this API is really about allowing you to do that. We then think you should long the top X percent, short the bottom X percent, and rebalance on some scheduled frequency. And so today what I'm going to do is walk through a few examples that help you understand how to use the, the pipeline API to, to build these types of strategies. What I'm not going to do is go heavy into the weeds of how to build a long short strategy or why you should build long short strategies and the benefits of those. Delaney's done that very effectively at the Quantopian.com lecture series. And if you go to lectures 17 and 18 at Quantopian.com slash lectures, you can dive into that content in great detail. What I'm going to focus on today is the Pipeline API and how we would use the Pipeline API technically to do these things. So the things you need to know about the Pipeline API is that it allows you to calculate factors and filters on 8,000 plus securities every day of your back test. So it lets you do mass calculation across the entire universe of securities. You can do this with pricing, volume, and fundamentals data, and you have a full history of any data element that you choose to use. In the near future, you'll also be able to use any data that's available in the Quantopian store to run your back tests and to use the pipeline to filter down your universe. You can use any data that's added to your pipeline in your algorithm to select your algorithm universe or make trading decisions. One of the complicated terminologies that you're going to hear me going back and forth on here is the concept of the universe, which is the 8,000 plus securities available on any given day in the US market versus your algorithm universe, which is the 500 securities that you identify that you want minutely data on. And within Quantopian, even if you're using pipeline, you're calculating your factors across 8,000 securities using daily data. That's across the entire universe. But you still have to identify the 500 securities that you want minutely data on to do more refined decision making. And so as I talk through the examples, look for those two differences as I'm explaining it. And if I, if I mix up the terminology between the universe and the algorithm universe, uh, I apologize in advance. I also apologize for them being named the same thing. We'll work on fixing that in the future. In any case, let's dive into our very first example. This is an example that is not going to do the long short equity strategy that I showed you. It's a much more simple example just to show the idea of the pipeline API. So in this example, we're going to get all of the securities in our universe and rank them by revenue. And then we're going to invest in the top 500 securities by revenue and rebalance monthly. So let's dive into that. So one of the things you'll notice right off the bat is to use this API, it's required that you use imports to define the information and the functions that you're interested in using. So we import some data, we import some functions in order to allow us to create custom factors and our pipeline, and then we move into initialize. The beautiful thing, or one of the beautiful things about the piping API is it's declarative. And so you, in initialize, declare everything that you want to know in your pipeline, all of the data, and then the back end does the heavy loading of figuring out how to calculate these in the most performant way. 
So you don't have to think about that or worry about that. You just have to worry about identifying the information that you're interested in having. Now remember, initialize is the function within your algorithm that's run once at the very beginning of the algorithm in order to set up all of the information that your algorithm needs moving forward. And so for the first thing we do is de declare our pipeline and identify that this is the pipeline that we're going to be working with. We then attach it to this algorithm and give it a name. Now you might ask right now, why do I have to name it? And at this point, really it's so that you can call the output for this pipeline. In the future, we see a world where you want to have multiple pipelines with an API within an algorithm, and so they'll have different names to help you define and get, get the output separately. But for now, you can only have one. You do still have to name it. So the first thing is you do is add that pipeline or declare that pipeline and attach it. From there, we're going to start adding our factors. The first one we want is the revenue because we're looking to get the revenue for all the companies within the universe and rank that. So we get that from Morningstar, um, it's fundamentals data, and so we it's on the income statement, we get the total revenue, and then we're gonna indicate that we just want the latest revenue, that's our first factor. And so we can just basically identify the data that we want and at, use the function dot latest in order to get that. We're gonna store that as revenue, and then we'll add that to our pipeline. Now the output of the pipeline is a data frame where every uh, the index is the security identifiers for every security that passes any filters you set. And each column is any data that you add to your pipeline. And so here I'm adding revenue as a column of data within my pipeline output. The next thing I'm going to do is rank all of the companies using this revenue factor. And so I basically call revenue and then I can just use the function dot rank to identify that I want to create a new factor that ranks all the companies by their revenue. I'm going to identify that I want this ascending equals false so that the number one rank is given to the largest revenued company. I store that as ranked rev and then I'm going to add that to my pipeline as well, giving it the column name rev rank. So I didn't identify that before. When you add something to the pipeline, you basically identify what the value you want is and then what the title for that column will be. I'm then also going to get the share class for all of the securities within the universe. And the reason is I only want to focus on primary shares. And so I, I get this from Morningstar. And again, I use dot latest to just get what the latest share class for every company is. I'm going to use this to set a screen. And so I do pipe dot set screen, which is essentially setting a filter around the entire universe to narrow down which securities are given back to me in my data frame, in my pipeline output. And I'm going to do two filters in this screen. The first one is going to limit it to companies where the revenue is greater than $1. So I don't want any of the really small companies or any companies that don't have revenue listed. That'll win out things like ETFs and other values that aren't uh, don't have fundamental data. I'm also then going to identify that I want my share class to equal one. Share class or is primary shares from the Morningstar fundamentals data is a Boolean value. So the values are one or zero. And so basically I'm saying limit the universe, limit the securities returned to me to those where the primary share class is equal to one and we know that it is the primary shares. I then do a schedule function to set this to rebalance monthly, and I set my slippage commissions and leverage. I then do a bunch of the work in before trading start. Now, just a reminder, before trading start is a function within your algorithm that runs before the trading day begins. And it runs every day that your algorithm is running in the back test before trading starts, hence the name. Um, we uh, call the pipeline output, and this is the name that we gave it up top. If you recall here, we said attach pipeline to top 500. So down here, when we're getting the pipeline output, we call it by name. And I'm going to store that in a context variable. The reason I do that is because I might want access to that uh, revenue data within my handle data or within the rest of my algorithm, and so I can store it and have access to the data frame returned. I'm going to then do a quick fill NA in case any of my companies return zero for revenue, uh, return NA, uh, NANs for revenue. I'm just going to make sure that I take care of those. And then I'm going to log some information here. What I'm logging for us is the length of my returned output, so we understand how many companies this is being calculated for, and then the first 10 values. 
and I'm sorting this by that revenue rank so we could look at it. And I'm going to kick this off to start running while I explain the rest of the algorithm. Um, what this is doing in the background while I kick it off is it goes and it starts computing these factors across the entire universe of security, so 8,000 securities every day. It's filtering them down and it's calculating this for an entire year. Once that data becomes available, you'll see that it gets very fast in giving it to me and running my algorithm, but it does have to do some pre-computation at the beginning there in order to get that information for me in the most performant way. For the purpose of this algorithm, I do some work to remove win-issued securities from the universe. Now, I've learned about win-issued securities when I was building this algorithm because as I started looking at the output, there are all these ticker symbols that ended with underscore WI. And after a little bit of research, I decided I'm not interested in having those included in this particular algorithm. And so I use pandas here to remove those. I convert the SIDs to symbols. I convert the symbols to strings. It's a bit of a, a hacky workaround, and we're going to have to add a filter so that you can do this more easily. But for the time being, this is these three lines of code are all about removing the win-issued securities. The next thing I do is I identify my context.top500 uh, list and what that is is I sort this top 500 by ranked revenue and I basically use iLoke to get the first 500 values. This list is what's going to become my universe and so I update the universe and a reminder this is the algorithm universe. So I update the algorithm universe with those top 500 companies and that's what I will then have minutely data available in my handle data or in any other function um, on the data object. So in handle data, I actually just record the leverage because I don't need to do too much there. And then my rebalance function down here basically just takes all of the companies in that top 500 list. It cycles through them and orders the weight that I would like of those companies for every company. And this is what rebalances monthly. So while that was running, we can see over here, I've just got the uh, start of my output that came from here. Now a reminder, this is just the um, logged info that I'm pulling from that pipeline output. The first value here, 4,594, is the number of, of securities that passed my filter, because that's the length of my data frame. And when we remember, my filter was basically looking at, I'm just trying to find it here, um, companies where the revenue is greater than one and that are the primary shares. So there's 4,000 companies that we are running and we're turning the information to me on that pipeline output. You'll then see this data frame where the index is all of the security identifiers for these companies. I'm then showing them ranked by revenue and what that revenue value is. And so you can then take this information, and I'm going to show a more complicated example now where you can look at this information and use this data to make trading decisions or learn more about your universe. So that's the first example that I wanted to run through here. And this is really just to help give a sense of how the pipeline works, how you declare the pipeline and start adding factors to your pipeline and setting a screen to narrow down the companies that you're interested in, and then using that to update your universe. The next algorithm that I want to walk through, my second example, is a little bit more complicated. This one is an algorithm example that I really love. It came, we had just started designing this API and somebody posted this into the forums as something that they wanted to do. And it's exactly the kind of algorithm we want to support. And we want to make easier for users to do in Quantopian. And it was traditionally very challenging to do until this API was developed. So with this, this request, what they were trying to do was build a stock ranking system with two signals. The first signal or factor was trading volumes over shares outstanding, and the second was the price of the current day over the price of 60 days ago. And then they want to rank the Russell 2000 stocks every month, longing the top 5% and shorting the bottom. So in my example, I'm calling this first signal or factor the liquidity factor, then the second one a momentum factor. And Just Stoff, our head of quant relations, has walked me through building these kinds of strategies a number of times, and she always draws the same picture. And so I wanted to explain it to you, you all on how I was thinking about this by showing that example. When she talks about this, she says the first thing you want is a column of all of your companies where every row in this table is, again, an individual company within the universe. And you want to calculate for the entire universe, in this case the Russell 2000, the raw liquidity factor. And that is, again, trading volume over shares outstanding. So you calculate your raw liquidity factor, and then you rank it. 
and you rank all 2,000 securities in the Russell 2000 by that factor. You then want to calculate your momentum factor. Um, and the raw factor that, which is the price yesterday over the price 60 days ago, you calculate that for all of the 2,000 securities in the Russell 2000, and then you rank those. You then create your combo raw score, and this is basically an average of the two rankings. So it's the liquidity rank plus the momentum rank divided by two. We then rank that combo raw score. And this combo rank is what we're going to use to decide which securities we long and which securities we short. Now, this has, as we've started using the Pipeline API in the community and showing this to people, I am building, I'm taking this algorithm as a template and building it over and over again as people have different questions. And it is a very standard template that we think everybody will start using to create the next generation of algorithms that win the contest, that get the selected for the hedge fund, that the, all of that. And so I'm going to walk through the code for how you do this. I will tell you the part about this that I find most challenging is making sure that you rank your factors in the correct order. And so just to talk about that a little bit, as I'm building it, what I have to think about is with my liquidity factor, what's good, low or high? With my momentum factor, what's better, low or high? And then make sure whichever the better value is, I rank at the same end of the spectrum. So for example, if liquidity is better as a low value, I need that to be my number one rank. And if momentum is better as a high value, I'm just using this example, I need that to be the number one rank. And so you have to think pretty carefully about what your factors are trying to do and how you want to rank them. So let's dive into this example here. Um, I call this the Bodong example because Bodong was the community member that submitted it. Um, this example has been shared on the forums and the entire discussion around it is available there if you want to go and see more about what people were thinking and doing. So again, we import all of the information, all of the functions we need for um, to build this factor. I'm sorry, to build this algorithm. In this example, we're going to build the liquidity factor and the momentum factor as custom factors. One of the most powerful things about this API is that you can use built-in factors. We have some that we've already provided, like Simple Moving Average, RSI, VWAP, where you just identify the inputs and it gives you the output, or you can create custom factors. So this is an example of how you create a custom factor. It's defined as its own class, and this is a liquidity factor. It has inputs, pre-declared inputs and window length in this. Now, you can choose to pre-declare them or declare them when you call the the class, but in this case, I'm going to say my inputs are US equity pricing dot volume and then the Morningstar fundamentals value for shares outstanding. And my window length is one, since for both of these, if we think back to what we were trying to do here, we want trading volume over shares outstanding. And so I then, in my compute function within this class, it requires four standard inputs self today, assets, and output. And then I have to identify that I'm also interested in my volume and my shares outstanding. My output is then just the volume of yesterday's volume over yesterday's shares. Now, one, this might look a little bit funky to you. And one of the reasons is that you have to, in your mind, think about the fact that the way the pipeline API is doing the computation here is with arrays of data. And so you're basically identifying, it's getting an array of all of the pricing information across the years for each security or the shares information and the volume information and then doing the math across the arrays, which is one of the reasons why it can be so performant. And so you then have to define that as output because you're outputting the whole array. The momentum factor looks very similar. Um, instead, our input is just the close price and our window length increases to 60 because if you remember what we're trying to do with this factor is getting the current day price or the previous day's price because we're doing this in before trading starts over the price 60 days ago. In our compute function then, our, our inputs change to those same four standard inputs and then we have close as an input. Our output becomes close of yesterday over the close 60 days ago. Oops, I just messed that up. There you go, over the close 60 days ago. Um, and because this is basically an array, negative one is the last value in the array, which would be yesterday, and zero is the uh, furthest away, which is the 60 days ago. So those are my two custom factors. 
The current third custom factor I'm going to create is a market cap custom factor. And this is to take the current close price, so the most recent close price, and the last known share's outstanding value and calculate a more recent market cap. And so I do yesterday's close times yesterday's share's outstanding, and I get a market cap. The reason I'm including this custom factor in my algorithm is that I want to use this to get the top 2,000 stocks by market cap which is approximately what the Russell 2000, I mean, that's exactly what the Russell 2000 is, um, but we're approximating it here because we're doing it um, using the data as opposed to with some kind of a filter for Russell 2000. So we're gonna create our own Russell 2000 essentially. In Initialize, this is where I set up everything, do my ranking and my factors in order to get my pipeline. I create my pipe and I attach it and I call it the ranked 2000. My two factors, I've got my liquidity factor, I add that to the pipeline because I want to actually know what that value is. I do the same thing with my momentum factor and I add that to the pipeline. Then I go ahead and I create a filter to represent the Russell 2000. And so this is, I take that market cap factor and then I take just the top 2000 companies by market cap because what we want for the Russell 2000 is the, uh, the largest 2000 companies by market cap. So there's this nifty little function called top 2000. I then set a screen to be equivalent to just that top 2,000. So what this will do is it ensures that the pipeline output I get will be limited to the top 2,000 companies by market cap. And then I'm going to start my ranking process. And I rank the first factor, which is my liquidity factor. And to do this, I call liquidity.rank. And I'm going to set a mask equal to the top 2,000. That's that same filter that I used up here to create my Russell 2000 screen. Now, the reason I give this a mask is because I want to get the rank of the top 2,000 companies by market cap. If I didn't include a mask, what the pipeline would do is it would rank all of the companies by market cap, and then the screen would filter out those that weren't in the Russell 2000. This makes sure I'll still have a 1 to 2,000 ranking of my liquidity rank, which is important as I'm trying to do this kind of um, combo rank algorithm. I then add that liquidity rank to my, fact, to my pipeline as well. Factor two is my momentum factor. I'm going to create a rank doing the same masking so that I'm limiting it to the Russell 2000, and I add that momentum rank to my pipeline as well. I then take the average of the two-factor ranking and add this to the pipeline. So that's my combo raw score I mentioned. So my liquidity rank plus my momentum rank over two. You could do this with any number of factors that you can compute. And so it could be four different factors that you're taking the average of. Um, whatever you want, two is what we're going to do here. I add this as my combo raw score. I then rank the combo raw score again, doing the mask it to the top 2,000. And what you'll notice here is in one step, I'm both ranking that score and adding it to my pipeline. So I will get that as well. I then also schedule function and set my long and short leverage here for my algorithm. Now, in before trading start, again, I'm going to get the output of my pipeline. Um, the, one of the important things to note that I didn't mention before is none of the computation for this pipeline is actually done is initialized. It starts running the computation and it does that computation the first time when before trading start is run and when pipeline underscore output is called. That's important to know because before trading start has a five minute time lot and this might actually be getting longer, but that allows you to do more computation here than you can within handle data, which is given only a 50 second timeout because it has to get done in any minutes time period as a minutely back test is running. And so doing this in before trading starts gives you the ability to have more time to calculate your factors. I'm gonna do a little bit of work here to remove some um, information that I don't want, I want to do fill, NA, fill zero for NAs and then remove anything momentum that actually is ends up being zero because of those NAs. And then I'm going to do the work to narrow down the securities to only the top, this is not 500, this should be the top 200, and update my universe. And so to do that, I rank, the, I get that ranked 2000, which is my context output. I sort it by the combo rank. And then I use ILOG to take the top 100, and that's my long list. And then I do the same thing using ILOG to get the bottom 100, and that becomes my short list. And so I set up these two lists there, and I update my universe with the union of those two lists. Again, this is updating the algorithm universe. 
it's important that I create a context variable for my long list and my short list as well, so that once I get into buying them, I know which stocks in my universe I long and which stocks in my universe I short. In handle data, I then go ahead and I'm going to kick this off to start running because, again, it's going to take a little while to get all the fundamentals data, do the computation, and give it back to me. In handle data, I'm going to do two things. Um, just for the purpose of us seeing what's going on, I'm going to print my long list, the head of my long list, the first 10 values in my long list, ranked by combo rank, and I'm going to print my short list as well every single day so we can see what those look like. In my rebalance function, I take the long weight and the short weight, I calculate that based on my leverage value over the number of securities in my long list and short list. And then I iterate through that context.long list variable that I created. And for every stock within that, I go ahead and I order that stock based on the long weight that I just calculated. I do the same for my shorts and I short those. And then I remove and sell any securities that are no longer in my list. So you can see over here, my data frames are just starting to get printed out as my logs. And what we'll notice is this is the first long list on the first day in my calculation. I'm going to scroll up really quick so we can remember what we added there. In our pipeline, we've got our raw liquidity score, our liquidity rank, our raw momentum score gets printed down here on the next line, our momentum rank, the combo raw score, which is the average, and then the combo rank. And you'll notice this is the long list on that first day where the ranks go from biggest to biggest to smaller. Uh, no, it's ranking it in reverse from that. So it's the smallest to biggest of the raw ranks. And over here, it's the short list, which the combo ranks are the smallest. And so it goes from smallest to largest there. And so you end up with your long list and your short list, and you can go and um, invest in those various ranked um, results and get your long short equity strategy. And so this is a structure for an algorithm that uh, you'll learn a lot more about in Delaney's lectures on long short strategies and that we highly recommend you approaching and using the pipeline API to help with. So that's the last example that I want to show today. I am willing to take some questions. So if you have them, please feel free to put them in the question window and let me know um, what more I can tell you about this, this new API. We're really excited that it's going to open up a whole new world of strategies as you can evaluate the entire universe of 8,000 securities and better filter that down and narrow it down to the securities that you're actually interested in. So I will hang around and answer any questions you've got. Just feel free to put them in the question window. Ah, Scott is asking where the API is documented. That's a great question, Scott. Um, there's a couple of places where you can get information on the API. The first is in the help in API docs. And uh, when you think about our docs, there's a couple of different sections. Right here under developing the IDE, there's a whole um, ex explanation of why we built this, how we think about it, an example that walks through the different details on it so that you can understand all the, the nitty gritty details on this API. As you scroll down into the API documentation, you'll also notice that there's a pipeline section there, which gives you actual API documentation for every, um, all of the different functions and classes that we've built in order to enable this. And then if you scroll down a little bit further, there's also three example algorithms that you can use in order to dive in even more detail. I'd also definitely suggest that you look at the forums because um, we've been doing a lot of examples in the forums with various people and there's a lot of good feedback coming there about how to use this and how to think about it. I would also highly recommend uh, Delaney's lecture series on long short strategies because um, just in terms of thinking about those types of strategies, that's a great place for it. And as with our product, our documentation is always a work in progress. So if you have questions on the documentation or feedback or things that aren't explaining uh, that aren't explained really well, let me know. Um, I've got another question about whether or not the pipeline API is available for live trading right now. It is not. Uh, we are actively working on adding that, but with live trading, we always uh, build it second because we want to be able to test it for longer. And so the way you'll see that roll out is paper trading will come first. That will allow people to make contest entries with this API. And then shortly thereafter, 
uh, we'll start to we'll let put it out for real live training so everybody can use it with uh, interactive brokers and whatnot. And so we have people actively working on this right now. Um, it's something that you should see in the short term, not the long term. Some other things that we've got working on right now, um, it's not currently available in research. Uh, but it will be soon. I have engineers working on that so that you'll be able to create your factors in research and do exploration there to understand what your factors are looking like and how they're calculating. I think that will be invaluable. Um, I know I want it as I'm playing with the API. And then we're also working on adding classifiers to the system. Classifiers are uh, they're challenging to explain, but the way to think about it is a common strategy might be uh, ranking the universe by, say, P.E. ratio, where P.E. ratios for an industrial company are really different than a consumer company. And so you'll want to do your rankings based on industry sector codes or based on deciles within a universe. And so a classifier will allow you to easily do those types of further segmentations within your universe. And so that's being worked on as well um, so that we can continue to expand the API. Another thing that I always forget to talk about uh, and is good to know is that the data within the pipeline API is all split and dividend adjusted from the date in the back test. So as opposed to our back testing API where it's from the date you run the back test, um, so this is split and dividend adjusted as of the date running in the back test. So um, as your back test moves forward, you've got better adjusted data there. Um, this is different from the back test today, although we're working on that change as well so that you'll get split and dividend. You have split adjusted data now, but you'll have dividend adjusted data as well for all of the data within the back test. However, the only way to access that today is within the pipeline. Excellent. Um, thank you very much, folks, for listening. Um, again, if there are any more questions, we're happy to answer them. You can always email me at karen at quantopian.com or get to any of us through Quantopian or through the forums. Uh, oops. And so uh, that looks like we're good there. Um, if you have any questions, again, feel free to shoot them over to me, and we look forward to seeing the algorithms you create. Thanks so much.